concept of movement and place comes out of uh, work done in the UK and in London, really around trying to balance the role and function of um, movement versus the importance of place. For a long time we've just thought of our streets and roads as a means of getting from A to B and increasingly we're starting to understand that we actually need to think about uh, streets three-dimensionally if you like and what are, what are their functions in different places and at different times. One of the important things we've done in this project is use virtual reality software tools to actually explore what places will be like in the future. Visual reality tools provide the opportunity to test and explore you know, what a place could be like and for the participants using it to actually explore that new environment that's being imagined. For example, a trackless tram being implemented into a new location. We have visualisations of how the trackless tram would move down Cecil Avenue in the Canning City Centre. And now our challenge is how do we actually realise that so here we are on Cecil Avenue, which is an important part of the proposed trackless tram route. As you can see, it's a public transport route at the moment with a bus in front of us, and there's lots of development sites here. At the moment, the area has got the start of that redevelopment occurring, and that started to happen with things like the apartments on the right-hand side we see just up here. The City of Canning have been able to start the Canning City Centre project by widening this part of Cecil Avenue to accommodate uh, for the trackless tram. At the moment it provides for bus lanes uh, to speed the buses up through the area, but ultimately when the trackless tram comes in that space will be provided for the trackless tram and it'll be a really important part of the revitalisation of the Canning City Centre area. So now we're on part of Albany Highway that the trackless tram uh, is likely to go along and this area is while it's wide and there's um, lots of lanes is also a big through area for for cars so there'll be competition for space in this area so this is a, a harder area to work your way through to plan for the trackless tram and this comes back to this whole issue of the movement and play strategy when we're on Cecil Avenue it's more about place and revitalising place. In this part of the route it's more about movement and getting the trackless tram through an area where there's already a lot of traffic and potentially a lot of congestion. So there'll be the challenge of actually working with all of the agencies, the road agencies and the public transport agencies to see if we can accommodate the trackless tram for a kilometre or so of this part of Albany Highway. So now we're on Manning Road. Manning Road is you know, another part of this system which is really predominantly about movement rather than place. The challenges here are just accommodating a trackless tram with, in amongst the free-flowing movement of the private vehicles. There are important redevelopment opportunities along this part of Manning Road, like on the right here we have the Bentley uh, redevelopment site which is an important redevelopment site that was initiated by the Department of Community some while back. It's a fairly busy road and there are some pinch points along it which require more work, but this is not as easy to accommodate the trackless tram as Cecil Avenue, uh, but easier than that part of Albany Highway we were on. We're heading towards Curtin University and so the important thing here is linking the Canning Station Canning city centre area through the university and then on into the CBD of Perth. Accommodating a trackless tram through the university is pretty straightforward because it's all under one control, one ownership, and the university can easily accommodate the space and works requirement to fit the trackless tram. The other thing that has happened over the last few years with the planning for the trackless tram is that it's been, from a space point of view, accommodated in all the master planning and that master planning has led to the redevelopment we see just in front of us. That development involves new student um, accommodation plus more teaching facilities and some opportunities for commercial activities. As the 
trackless tram comes through Curtin University, it'd be partly about movement, but it'd be also a, really importantly about place that would help activate the streetscapes within the Curtin campus. As we leave the Curtin University campus and get onto Kent Street heading for Victoria Park, this part of the route would be pretty easy to accommodate the trackless tram because of the space and the width of the existing roadways. It would all be about the movement function, getting the trackless tram through this part of Kent Street as swiftly as possible with minimum number of stops. We're going through what's referred to as Technology Park. It's sort of linked to the Curtin University and there's always aspirations for further development and redevelopment around Tech Park. There are redevelopment opportunities along this route with the redevelopment of the old Ag Department site. But as we move from this part of Kent Street into the more suburban part, the conditions change, the road becomes a little narrower uh, and there's more challenges and more detail of working with the community. The important thing about a trackless tram type vehicle is that it would be, because it's electric, it would be very quiet and very accommodating and very sympathetic to the suburban function that we're running through. Uh, there's important facilities along this part of Kent Street, the Kent Street High School, and further down other community facilities. So the route would provide a great opportunity to link people and place along this part of the route. As we move out of Kent Street and into this part of Albany Highway, we'll note that this part of Albany Highway is the heart of Victoria Park. You'll see that it's very, very different than the highly trafficked part of Albany Highway we looked at down at Canning. This part of Albany Highway is a low speed, it's all about place. So accommodating the trackless tram here will be about accommodating the trackless tram in a mixed traffic environment. So the trackless tram will be going at a modest speed along with the rest of the traffic and we don't expect to try and accommodate a trackless tram in a dedicated lane. It'll be more like a trackless tram running or a tram running through the suburbs of Melbourne. Working its way through uh, the fantastic streetscape and commercial and retail and restaurant strips of this part of Albany Highway. As we come closer to the CBD of Perth, there's other redevelopment opportunities that are likely to occur over time associated with things like the various car yards that are still along this part of Albany Highway. The implementation of a trackless tram would have a great opportunity to help revitalisation of this part of Greater Perth. Just going past the bus interchange point. So now we're moving out of Victoria Park towards the CBD of Perth heading across the causeway and then the trackless tram would find its way through the CBD, maybe become part of a replacement for the cat bus loops. And importantly, it would create a great link from the CBD of Perth back through Curtin University into Canning train station and the Canning city centre revitalisation. The trackless tram is a really great opportunity to help stimulate redevelopment in the inner parts of Perth as we see other cities around the world go through that revitalising process. The trackless tram may go up Adelaide Terrace and into St George's Terrace or it may find other routes around the city. All of those things are yet to be determined. But the really important thing is that it's an opportunity to help create those public transport links and create that really vibrant area where most of the jobs are, enhance the employment and livability of the inner ring of Perth. So as we've moved along the different parts of the trackless tram route, there's some areas that are easy to accommodate, some areas that are moderately challenging and other areas which are there's a whole lot more detail to work through. But that framework of the place and movement guides the way we think about the whole planning of this new public transport and city shaping opportunity.
This webinar has focused on the practical realities of you know, looking at what a place is like now, imagining what it could be in the future, and using frameworks like Movement in Place to explore how we balance and integrate a new system into an existing urban fabric. The other webinars focus on what are the um, partnerships and alliances and mechanisms for actually delivering um, these new activated corridors or 21st century boulevards on the ground. <laughs>